Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Irene Dunn and Charles Boyer in Love Affair. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Once in a blue moon occurs that phenomenon of the motion picture art, the perfect motion picture. Sometimes it, it, it makes no pretensions to greatness. It's only a simple tale of men and women. But all the elements of story, stars, and direction are so happily combined that the finished product emerges as a living thing. That blue moon was shining over Hollywood when Irene Dunn and Charles Boyer teamed in the RKO picture Love Affair. And ever since, you've been asking us to beg, borrow, or steal the original stars and present it here. However we did it, they're here tonight. For this romantic story of a love affair that begins on shipboard and ends... Well, that's for the third act to say. It doesn't take much knowledge of the theater to guess what would happen if a Broadway producer were able to announce the appearance of Charles Boyer and Irene Dunn for a single performance. As a matter of fact, there's probably no theater in the world but the Lux Radio Theater that would be big enough to hold the crowd. And so if you'd... Well, if you'd like to thank someone for your seats tonight, the credit should go to Lux Flake. If this were a Broadway playhouse, the line at the box office would probably extend much farther than you could see. And every man and woman in that line would be ready to pay several hard-earned dollars to enjoy these stars in a hit like Love Affair. But it doesn't cost you a cent at our box office. Because so many millions of you have discovered another great hit. The title? Lux Flake. Now as we raise the curtain, an audience from coast to coast joins an audience of members of the American Armed Forces around the world for the first act of Love Affair, starring Charles Boyer as Michelle Marnay and Irene Dunn as Terry McKay. It's said of certain people that they have less privacy than a goldfish, but Michelle Marnay must have gazed with envy at the placid goldfish bowl, for compared to him, the finny resident was a hermit. On a night not long ago, the radio gossipers burned up the airwaves of the world with the latest news of his unprivate existence. On the continent... Ladies of all nations will be desolate at these reports. Michelle Marnay sails tonight for America to marry Lois Clark, American heiress to a fortune of 600 million francs. In New York... Prince Michel Marnay, the French heart crusher, sails incognito tonight aboard the Empress. Why? Because Lois Clark and her 20 million smackers will be waiting for him in the dock in New York City. And this time, it's Mary. On the steamship Empress, the subject of all this excitement, paces the deck slowly, reading a radiogram. Suddenly, a gust of wind takes it from his hand and whisks it around the corner of the deck. Monsieur Mane gives chase, and rounding the corner, pulls up short as he sees a very pretty girl reading a radiogram. Oh, I beg your pardon, madam. I think you're reading my radiogram. Uh, I beg your pardon? Uh, the wind blew it here. My radiogram. I believe you're reading it. Oh, Oh, just a moment. I want to finish. Uh, oh. Oh, well. How do I know this is yours? Can you identify yourself? Well, I am Michel Marnay. Well, don't tell me you're the fella. The one they've been talking about on the radio. Uh-huh. Well, now, uh, can you tell me what this message says? It's frightfully personal, and, uh, uh, well, I'd like to be sure that, uh, well, you know. <laughs> well, <clears throat> it says, uh, remembering a warm, beautiful night, a thunderstorm over Lake Como, and you. And you, that's you. <laughs> yes. Oh, it was all right, huh? Uh-huh. It was nice? Uh-huh. Do you think it'll ever take the place of baseball? But, uh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Never mind. Here's your radiogram, Mr. Marnay. Good evening. No, no, wait, please. Uh, I'm in trouble, serious trouble. Well, I could have told you playing around Lake Como, the poor thing. No, I must talk to someone. Well, I'm not very good at that sort of thing. I talk a lot, really. I'm trying to break myself of the habit. Well, but... you have an honest face. I, I, I can trust you, can't I? Well, yes, I guess so. Come with me. But the captain has an honest face, too. No, no. Shall we go to your cabin or mine? Well, mine. 
It's not that I'm prudish. It's just that my mother told me never to enter a strange room in the month ending an hour. Oh, well, your mother must be a very beautiful woman. <laughs> Here it is. What's your name? Terry McKay, and I'm traveling alone. That wasn't by any chance what was troubling you. <laughs> yes, of course. How did you get? Oh, this is fine. You know you saved my life. I've been bored to death. I haven't seen one attractive girl on this boat since we left. Not one. Can you imagine? Nine days like that? Oh, it's terrible. Life should be bright. It should be beautiful and bubbly like, like pink champagne. You know, I got scared. I said to myself, don't beautiful women travel anymore? Evidently not. Then I saw you and it was all right. A uh, cigarette? No, thanks. Have you been getting results with a line like that, or would I be surprised? <laughs> well, if you were surprised, it would surprise me. That sounds like a nasty crash. I could, I could make a few, too, if I felt like it. I'm sure you could. I know I can. That's what I said. I think I will. <laughs> How's your fiancé, Miss Lois Clark? Uh, oh, she, she's got a cool. Oh, too bad. Got it to Lake Como? No, no, she wasn't there. Then the lady of the lake isn't... No, no, it was her best friend. Oh, tell me, Bun. <laughs> ah, this boat is going awfully fast. Only eight and a half days till we get in. Now, is there any reason why, from now on, shouldn't be pink champagne? Tell me, um, uh, do you like that picture on the table? Oh, yes. Friend of yours? A very good friend. Oh, I see. He's nice, eh? Very nice. Oh, he's all right. Uh-huh. Where is he now? In New York. He sends me on a buying trip every once in a while. You see, he's my boss, too. Oh. Uh, you don't think he would approve of... Pink champagne. Uh, no, 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 I, I, don't, no, I don't really Well, think I think it's very touching. You and him, very beautiful. I like that. He must be very engaging. Well, you can just imagine how attractive he is when I can resist so charming a person as you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I'll go now. After all, I still have deck tennis, kino, shuttle ball. Don't tell me you're embarrassed. <laughs> yes, yes, to my embarrassment. Well, if you don't mind, I'll take my pride for a walk. Unless, by chance, you'd care to have dinner. Dinner? With, oh, with that I'd like very much. Huh? I'd love to have dinner. Oh, now, now, you mustn't believe all you've heard about me. Oh, I couldn't believe all, Mr. Marnay. But I gather you've known quite a few women, or maybe few is the wrong word. Well, yes. And I gather you haven't much respect for them. Well, no. But, of course, you've always been fair in your judgment. I've been more than fair. I idealized them. Every woman I meet, I put on a pedestal. But the longer I know her, the better I know her. And the better I know her, you know, well, let's talk about you. Oh, no, not just now, please. We'll talk about me another time. I'd like to take a walk on the deck. Deck, of course. Signore Marne. Signore Marne. Here, boy. Radiogram, Signore Marne. Oh, my, my, another one? <laughs> Your name, Signora? McKay. There is one for you also. Here, uh, Signora. Oh, thank you. From New York? Uh-huh. Yours from New York, too? Uh-huh. Mm, well, now, where were we? Oh, yes. Uh, what's the name of that uh, strange place you were born? Kansas. Oh. Uh, and from there, where did you go? Well, from there, I went to New York and got a job singing in a nightclub from 10 to 3 in the morning. And then the manager used to chase me around his office till about 4, and then I went <laughs> home. <laughs> and then one night... He came along. He, oh, oh, yes, the man in the picture. Uh-huh. And he said I didn't belong in a place like that. He said, um... Well, that you should improve yourself. Yeah, so I studied hard. So that someday you would be a charming and lovely wife. Yes, that was more or less the idea. Well, that sort of brings us up to date, and, and there's something else I want to tell you. Yes? I don't think it's very good for either one of us to be seen together. Right or wrong, people like to talk. It had better be goodbye. What's the matter? The fate? Of you? <laughs> no. Well, after all, we're on the same ship. There's still eight days, you know. Well, you can take nice long walks in the sunshine. We'll be in Madeira tomorrow. The sun always shines in Madeira. Well, what do I do if it rains? <laughs> oh, no. No, it's no good. I see. Particularly no good for you. Yes, that's right. Being seen with you is news, and, um, well, uh, I just think we'd better spread out. Good night. All right, good night. <laughs> Passengers will please be back on board at 5 o'clock. 
hello. Going ashore? Yes, I'm calling on a lady this afternoon. Oh, even in Madeira? No, no. You're mistaken this time. It's my grandmother. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. She lives way up on that hill, see? Would you like to come along and meet her? I'd be glad to come. This is her house. That's a little chapel over there. And down the hill, see those houses? That's the village. What a divine place. I want to meet her. But I'll see if she's here. Janou! Janou! She must be in the chapel. What is there about this place? Something makes you feel you want to whisper. It's like peace here. It's, it's like another world. Yes, my grandmother's world. Tell me a little more about it. My grandfather was in the diplomatic service. This was his last post. He died here. So she stayed on to be near him. She must be waiting, I think, a little impatiently for the day she would join him. Michel. Michel, my dear. Why didn't you tell me you were arriving? <laughs> Janou, darling, I wanted to surprise you. Oh, I am very surprised. So you are going to be married, Michel. Is this the girl? Uh, no, no, this is uh, Miss Thierry McKay. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? She's very charming, Michel. I like her. Oh, thank you. I'm glad. If you'll excuse me, I'll sit down for a moment. I am longer at my prayers nowadays than my knees. Well, they are as old as I am. <laughs> Uh, tell me, are you English? No, I'm American. American? Do you know I have a special fondness for America? It was my husband's first post after we married. Really? Yes. In fact, we went to Washington on our honeymoon. Uh, my husband was in the French embassy. Mr. Grover Cleveland was your president. We met him, a great hearty man. He got married while he was in the White House. And we all went to the wedding. <laughs> I remember the lovely bride. I remember it caused a sensation. She did not wear a bustle. <laughs> what a simple way to cause a sensation. <laughs> <laughs> For those days, it was a revolution. You have such a lovely place here. Thank you. I'd like to stay on forever. Oh, no. You are too young for that. It is a good place to sit and remember, but you still have to create your memories. I see you looking at my chapel. Would you like to go in? Oh, may I? But of course. Thank you. How long has it been for you, Michel? <laughs> well, a long time. Mm, since you were an altar boy, huh? <laughs> and you better go into it. It won't hurt you. I'll prepare tea. in a moment. Where is Michel? He'll be right along. May I help you? Thank you, my dear. I'm sorry I had to let my maid go. I have to watch my expenses. You see, I planned on dying when I was 75. But here I am 77. So if I'm not going to die, I should start saving my money. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> oh, what a lovely painting. You like it? It's charming. Who did it? Michel. Michel, he painted it for me. But it's good. He is very talented. Unfortunately, he's also very critical. The artist in him would create. The critic destroys. As a result, he has not done anything since. What a pity. Oh, Michel is too busy living, as they call it. Things come easy to him. And he's always allured by the art he's not practicing, the places he has not been, the girls he has not met. Maybe I shouldn't have met him. Oh, no. No, you are different. I don't mind confessing to you, my dear, that I have been worried about him. I am frightened sometimes. Why? That one day life will present a bill to Michel, and that he will find it hard to pay. But when I see him with you, I feel better. Oh, I wish I could share your confidence. You will have it when you need it. There is nothing wrong with Michel that a good woman could not make right. Hello. Well, how have your two girls been getting along? You'd be surprised. Yes, wouldn't he? I bet Janu did all the talking. Uh -huh. <laughs> She's been telling me that when you were a little boy, if you didn't get your own way, you'd lie on the floor and kick and get red in the face. Oh, what did you say? Uh, well, I said you didn't do that anymore. Now, if you don't get your own way, you just get embarrassed. Uh, oh, well, may I have some tea? Once. I 
I think she's wonderful right now. She is. Not so loud, I can see you. <laughs> well, I'm afraid it's for us. We ought to be at the boat. I do not like boat whistles. I'll come back and see you soon, I promise. Please do. You're shivering. Don't you want your shawl around you? Thank you. Such a beautiful shawl. You like it? Yes, I do. I'll send it to you someday. Goodbye, Michel. Goodbye, Janou. Goodbye, my dear. God bless you. Mind if I come in with you for a moment? Please do. It's getting very windy on deck. Yes, isn't it? Well, I just want to thank you for a grand evening. And I want to thank you for the loveliest day I've ever known. You were very sweet to my little grandmother. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write to her. Oh, but that'll be nice. You know, I'm very, very grateful to my grandmother. You should be. But I think she's made you see me in a more favorable light. She has. Now you're wondering, of course, why I'm not better than I am. Ah, I think you're all right. Oh, that's as far as you'll go? That's as far as I can go. Terry. Feel how the boat's rocking. We must have changed our course. I think we have, dearie. But only for a while. Good night. Dearie, listen to me. No, no, don't. We're heading into a rough sea, Michelle. Good night. Good night. Hello, Terry. Hello. If you say a penny for your thoughts, I'll jump overboard. <laughs> What are you doing out here? Couldn't you sleep? No. Too near New York to sleep. What about you? All I seem to do is turn and toss. Dreaming? No, you couldn't call it dreaming. I'm awake. I would call it wishing. My father used to say, wishes are the dreams we dream when we're awake. He used to drink quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a song once about wishing. It was nice. <laughs> was it? How does it go? <laughs> oh, I forget. But it said that if you wish long enough in your mind, and if you wish strong enough in your heart, and if you keep on wishing long enough and strong enough... You get what you want for Christmas? <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, well, we'll get it in the morning. Well, I guess if we have something in our minds, we'd better say it now. Yes, I... I... You know, I've never worked in all my life. In all my life, I've never worked. I've been thinking about that. What did you say? Mm, I didn't say anything. You did, too. Oh. You, you said I was very fond of expensive things, furs and jewels and things. Oh, did I say that? I guess you and I have been more or less used to a life of pink champagne. It, it might be a little difficult to change. You like beer? Yes. Yes, I do, but... I know. My father used to say, it's a funny thing. The things you like best in life are either illegal, immoral, or fattening. <laughs> <laughs> your father. <laughs> I told you he drank like a fish. <laughs> I wonder what your father would think of me. Never working. Not yeah. once. Just because you haven't, that doesn't oh, that mean... doesn't mean that I couldn't, of course not. But, you know, I might not find out all at once. It might take me, oh, at least six months to find out if... Um... If, if what? Eh? Well, to, uh, it's hard to say. Uh, after all, it's unfair to ask you to take a chance. But, uh, well... Well, if I worked hard enough and long enough and wishes came true, where would you be? What are you trying to say, Michelle? I'm trying to say that it would take me six months to find out if I'm worthy to say what is in my heart. Oh, that's just about the nicest. Well, I... I guess I'll turn in now and do a little rolling and tossing and thinking. I'll think about it and let you know in the morning. Going my way? No, no, I think I'll, I'll walk a little. You know, uh, marriage is a very serious thing for a girl like me. Yes, I know. Do you like children? Ye yes, yes, I do. Uh -huh, so do I. Michelle, Michelle. Oh, there you are. I was worried. I thought you had left the boat without telling me. Oh, no, Michelle, listen. If everything goes all right for both of us, in six months, I mean, that's July. That's July, yes. Now, look, I've written out these directions. Eh? Now, read them carefully so there won't be any mistakes. Oh, my dear, my darling. D darling, that's me? Uh -huh. Oh, meet me on July 1st, 5 o'clock, 102nd floor, 
top of the Empire State Building. Yes. There it is. See? Over there. It's the tallest building in the world. You can't miss that. It's the nearest thing to heaven we have in New York. And oh, yes, darling. <laughs> Be sure to take the elevator. Mr. DeMille presents Act Two of Love Affair, starring Irene Dunn and Charles Boyer, in just a moment. Meantime, I have a riddle for Sally. Oh, Sally, what five-letter word in the English language is never pronounced right? Oh, well, goodness, I, I can't imagine. No? It's very simple. W-R-O-N-G. Wrong. Now, honestly, Mr. Roy. Now, honestly, Sally. Isn't it a good idea to keep those two words straight? For instance... If you took that pretty rayon dress you're wearing and scrubbed it with a strong wash day soap... But that's wrong, Mr. Roy. Of course it is. Chances are you'd have a sadly faded and streaked piece of material on your hands when you were through. But if you washed it carefully in gentle, lukewarm Lux Suds... Uh-huh. It would come out fresh and bright and pretty as ever. That's right. Yes, there's a right and a wrong way of doing things. And nowadays, when you want everything to last... And wear better than ever. Of course, you want to be sure you're giving your pretty washables the right kind of care. Gentle New Quick Lux has no harmful alkali to injure fabric or fade colors. And for those quick, rich suds, there's none of the cake soap rubbing that's so hard on fabrics, on rayons particularly. Many rayons, you know, are temporarily weak when wet, so never rub or twist them. Now, it costs you less than a penny to Lux Address. So don't risk ruining pretty washables with strong soap. Stick to care you know is safe, gentle Lux Flakes. So safe, in fact, that more makers of fine washables advise Lux Flakes than advise all other soaps combined. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Love Affair, starring Charles Boyer as Michel Manet and Irene Dunn as Terry McKay. The excitement of the landing is over. Michelle and Terry have been rushed away from the dock under the protection of their respective fiancés. Now, a few hours later, Terry stands on the balcony of her penthouse apartment, gazing dreamily at the majestic tower of the Empire State Building. Behind her, in the room, the door opens quietly. Terry, hello, darling. Oh, hello, Ken. Well, darling, how does it feel to be back? Oh, fine. Ken, I, I want... Sorry I had to rush away this morning, but right now there's not a thing on my mind except that I'm in love. Kiss? Mm-hmm. Hey, wait a minute. Kiss me again, will you? Uh-huh. Remind me to ask you later what's happened to your kisses. Oh, by the way, take a look at the paper. Your picture's on page three. Marnie wedding off. Think of it. Your picture right under the headline. Well, they could have said, uh, beautiful Terry McKay comes between the famous Marnay and his fiance. Or maybe they should have. Should they? Well, after all, darling, you were on the boat with him, weren't you? Uh-huh. Did you meet him? Yes. Uh-huh. Must be a fascinating chap. Yeah. Oh, and he's not nearly as bad as people say. <laughs> darling, if there were only some way without hurting you. Uh-huh. I get it. I'm sorry. Oh, Ken. Oh, Terry, darling, how can you do such a thing? It doesn't make sense. I know. You must be losing your mind. I know. Terry, what are you going to do? We're giving it six months to, uh, well, to see if we're both sure what we want. I'm leaving New York. I'm going to get a job somewhere singing. And, uh, well, uh, we're going to meet in July. Oh, Terry, listen to me. I won't let you do this. You're, you're too fine. I wanted to marry you. I, sweetheart, look at me. Can't you see I'm in love? I know, Ken, darling. But so am I.
Society like me and Philadelphia. That noise is applause, isn't it? Maybe they're applauding your $2 dinner. You've got the job, Miss McKay. If you'll step into my office, I'd like to talk about a nice long contract. Six months. Six months? That's not a long time. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. There's a whole lot of them. Well, what do you think? Hmm. Eleven paintings in a few weeks. Uh-huh. You have been working hard. That's Michelle. right. Now I want you to work hard, Kobe. I want you to sell them for me. Now, you can go to work on this one first. Still life? Hmm. What's the matter? Don't you like it? No. But I'll tell you, if you signed it Michel Marnet instead of Andre, I could sell it to plenty of women. No, no, no. no, no. This is the new Marnet, whose name is Andre. Well... I was hoping you would like this one. So was I. Oh, uh, may I help myself to this apple? Sure, if you don't mind it being only half an apple. Oh. <laughs> that was my lunch. Would you care to have dinner with me? No. <laughs> I'll take a cigarette, though. Oh, uh, sir, I'm sorry, but I quit smoking. Oh, uh-huh. What's the painting on the easel? Oh, it's not quite finished. Ah, it's a woman. It, oh, thanks. Do you like her? Mm, well... Uh... I know, I know. You would not like to be seen with her. Mm. You did this without a model? Well, you know, women are more expensive than apples. I'd finish it, though. You shouldn't have any trouble getting a model. Uh-huh. This is the new money. Well, I suppose if I can't sell my paintings, I'll have to get a job. I have to make money, you know. Lots of money. Oh, look, Cobain. Uh, did you ever see those fellows who work on scaffoldings? You know, they make pictures. Pretty girls, automobiles, beer. Sign painting? That's it. How do you get that kind of work? I don't know. Maybe you need an agent. Oh, maybe. Well, I'll have to find out, eh? Hey! Hey, say, say, look, Pug. Eh? Now, I don't know how much of this kind of work you've done, but when you're standing on a scaffold four flights up, you stand quiet, see? Oh. You don't go dancing around like the Queen of the May or you'll land up on the sidewalk. <laughs> Sorry, my friend, just that I'm happy. How do you like my beautiful girl, see? She looked down on all New York and sell beer by the gallon. Michelle! Michelle! Who is that? Well, there's a guy down there waving at you. Michelle! Oh, Kubi, what is it? I've been looking all over for you. I have good news. You know the woman I wouldn't be seen with? I sold her for $200. Two hundred? My friend, I'm a painter. Yeah, well, so am I. March 29th, July 1st, three months more. Three months. May 2nd, two months to go. June the 4th, one more month. Two weeks from today. Only one more week. Next week. Thursday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Today. 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 Hello? Hello? Oh, uh, is this Mr. Kenneth Bradley? Well, this is Miss Lane at the Salon Modern. Uh, Mr. Bradley, I thought I'd call you. Miss McKay came into the shop this afternoon for some new dresses. Yes, and uh, we used to send the bills to you and... Oh, of course. Anything she wants? Yes, sir. What? Well, I'll try to hold her here. How long will you be? All right. Goodbye. Uh, No, no, Miss Lane. I I think I have enough right here, thank you. Nothing else. Well, if you're sure, Miss McKay, uh, where shall I have this sent? Well, I don't know. At the moment, I'll have to call you back and let you know. Let me see. That'll be $234. There. I think that's right, isn't it? You mean uh, we're not to charge this to uh, to Mr. Bradley? No. No? No. Goodbye. Hello, Terry. Why, Ken. How are you, Terry? Where have you been hiding all these months? Ken, what are you doing here? How on earth did you know I... Oh, Miss Lane, I see. What time is it, Ken? I'm late. It's uh, five minutes to five. Oh, heavens. It's a good seeing you, Ken. It's good seeing you, Terry. There's so much to talk to you about. Oh, well, I'm sorry I'm in such a hurry. Oh, but there's so much I want to say well, to you. Well, call me up sometime, Ken. Uh, oh, no, you can't do that either when I'm, I'm going to be married. Oh. You're going to be married? Oh, yes, Ken, and I'm late. What time did you say it was? Uh, four minutes to five. It looks like I came all the way down here just to tell you what time it was, doesn't it? Yeah. 
Goodbye, Ken. Goodbye. Good luck. Driver, can't you hurry? Sorry, Miss. Traffic jam. I can cut across 30 seconds, please. Oh, never mind. I think I'll save time if I get out here. I'm in a hurry. Here you are. Hey, what's the big rush? I'm going to be married, and I'd like you to be the first to congratulate me. Oh, sure. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Hey, look out. Look out, Miss. What's the matter? What's happened? A woman can hit just about on my cab just this minute. I was talking to her. Get an ambulance. Get an ambulance. Quick. <laughs> the tallest in the world, 102 floors above this peak. If you ladies and gentlemen will just move around this way, you can see the whole of downtown New York. Elevated a street. Going down, sir? Eh? What's that? Going down. Oh, no, no, I'm just uh, waiting for... What time is it? Ten minutes after five. Oh, thanks. Gee, listen, must have been an accident somewhere. Yeah. the George Washington Bridge. It's not very clear tonight, but if you look carefully, you can see the red light which marks the top of the steel tower. On a clear night, you can see the automobile lights crossing the bridge. The George Washington Bridge is the second light. Going down. No, not yet. It's 8 o'clock, sir. I said I'm not going down yet. Yes, sir. Hmm. Looks like a storm coming up, don't it? Boy, some rain, huh? Going steady for three hours. Well... Hey, wait a minute. You mean you're going down now? Yes, I'm going down. Well, Doctor? How's she doing? Will she be all right, Doctor? Well, her x-rays aren't too encouraging. It's hard to say if she'll ever walk again. We could tell better in about six months. Are you the fellow she was yelling about under the anesthetic? No. No, that's another chap. She was on her way to marry him. Mm. Have you notified him? No, I haven't. She doesn't want that. Because until she knows what you say you won't know for a while, she'd rather he didn't know. I see. Well, that's being sensible. A nice girl. I think so. Well, may I go in? Of course. Hello, Ken. Hello, Terry. Ken, this is Father Haney. Yes, I know. We've met. He was the one who sent for me, child. We weren't very sure we were going to have you with us. <laughs> Fooled you, didn't I, Father? I guess I had this coming to me. But if the punishment fits the crime, Father, I must have been a very bad girl. Oh, Ken is a... Ken's the man I told you. Yes, I know. He explained. He did, huh? Oh, fine thing. A tattletale. Men like to talk, don't they, Father? You see, I was on my way to be married this afternoon. I, I was going to meet him, this other fellow. Do you suppose he'll wait a very long time? <laughs> Station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Now, before Mr. DeMille returns with Charles Boyer and Irene Dunn for Act Three of Love Affair. Let's look in on Anne and Bill, a young couple who are entertaining some new neighbors. It's been a pleasant evening until Bill persuaded Anne to play the piano. I, I'm sorry. I don't remember how it goes. Let's all go outside where it's cooler. But Anne's real reason for confusion is her hands. They look like a couple of lobsters on the keys. 
I saw that woman staring at them. I love keeping house for Bill, but, but her hands are so pretty and white. I'll bet she doesn't do dishes three times a day. She does, though, Anne. But she guards her pretty hands with Lux Flakes in her dishpan. And all you need to do to have your hands grow soft and smooth and lovely again is to change to gentle Lux for your dishes instead of that strong soap you're using now. Yes, actual tests have proved that simply changing to Lux gets rid of ugly dishpan redness. The women who made these tests used no creams or lotions. They just changed from strong soap to gentle, new, quick Lux. And in from two to seven days, their hands grew lovelier. Now, isn't that an easy beauty tip and a thrifty one? It costs you less than a penny a day to change to Lux Flakes for dishes. Less than a penny a day to change dishpan hands to Lux hands. If Anne will do this one simple thing, she'll have a pleasanter reason for interrupting her music. Why, why, Bill! Honey, you've got the prettiest hands in the world. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. The curtain rises on the third act of Love Affair, starring Irene Dunn and Charles Boyer. For three months, Carrie lay in the hospital, unable to move. And then at last, they told her she might go out, as far as the hospital gate. But in her loneliness, Terry has found company. The children from the Lincoln Heights orphanage next door, who climb over the fence each day to sit in an adoring circle around her wheelchair. Oh, Miss Terry, sing for us, sing for us. <laughs> what again? I mean, that song you wrote, Miss Terry, the one about the wishing. We've been practicing it, Miss Terry. We've got a trio. Yes. No. All right, I'll sing it, and then you join in. Oh, Keep quiet, everybody. Okay, Miss Terry. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Wishing will make it so. Just keep on wishing and care will go. Dreamers tell a dream come true. If no one is Yes, I know. How long has this been going on? Well, just a few days. I, I hope you're not angry. Oh, no, no, no. And you've got as many youngsters on your hands as I have, lady. 
you've got a problem. Oh, I don't know. I like them. I like kids. I do, too, but <laughs> they don't like me. They call me <clears throat> Pickle Puss. Oh, dear. I can see they like you and music, too. And if it has so much influence, if you can do so much in a few days, I'm thinking... I'm wondering if you're thinking the same thing I am. I'll be up and around pretty soon, and music has charms, and I like children, and children like me, and I'll be needing a job badly. Uh, it would only be an experiment, you understand. We, we couldn't pay a high wage. Oh, that's all right. Just so you'd pay me enough that I don't go around calling you pickle for... Oh, yeah. Christmas fun, Christmas fun. Something for the Christmas fun, sir. Thanks. Michelle, welcome home. <laughs> How are you, Grubby? <laughs> But I'd pay you a Christmas visit. Good, but where have you been, Michelle? I've been trying for six months to get in touch with you. Oh, Madea, mostly. You received my painting. Come here. Look at the gallery. I've given you a one-man show. <laughs> and have they been selling? Wonderful! You haven't wasted your time, Michelle. <laughs> you should have seen the 50 I threw over the cliff. <laughs> I can read your state of mind when you painted these. You were very sorry for yourself when you painted this one. <laughs> Getting over your broken heart. Broken heart? Oh, that's not for me. But here, this one of the girl in the lace shawl, in this you became a painter. Hmm. Well, I'm not exactly ashamed of that one myself. You know, I had a great deal to say, and I tried to paint it instead. Oh, let me tell you something. A girl came in here the other day, a crippled girl. She saw this picture. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, madame? Oh, Michelle, it's for you, Miss Lois Clark. No, excuse me. Hello? Michelle, this Oh, how are you, Lois? I called your hotel. They said you could be reached at this number. Oh, Michelle, I've just got to see you. Well, uh... I know you must be busy, but can you make the theater tonight? Well, I don't know, no. Call me later, darling, and let me know. Do try to make it. And whatever you do, don't plan anything for after the show, huh? All right. <laughs> Lois, where shall we go from here? Well, suppose you plan where we'll go, Michelle. After all, this is your evening, darling. Well, I don't know where to go anymore. I just got back, you know. If you... Hey, what is it, Michelle? Who's that girl you're staring at? That one sitting on the aisle. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Jerry. What, uh, what were you saying, Lois? I was saying you're never to lost to do just the right thing. Terry. Oh, Ken. Terry, why don't you tell him? I'll go get him. No, 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 Ken. Up. The first time you're able to get out and have a good time, and you have to meet him. And all I could say was, hello. Well, the show's over. The boy gets the girl. Shall we go? Sure. Asha. Asha, will you bring the wheelchair, please? take you home when everybody's going out celebrating Christmas Eve. Well, I'm going to ask you again. Why don't you let me help you? All right, I'll tell you again. If you paid for my getting well, he wouldn't like it. And if he didn't like it, I wouldn't like it. And if you did get me well and I went to him, you wouldn't like it. But then he certainly ought to know. Oh, no, no, because, because if I didn't get well, that would be awful. No, mm-mm. Unless I can walk to him, and when I say walk, I mean run. He'll never know. I've got my job, and I'm on a budget, and if things come out all right, then maybe if I'm a good little girl, I'll get what I want next Christmas. But, Miss McKay, we don't want to go without you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Doctor, I could be back in a couple of hours. This is the Christmas benefit, their first public performance. This is my team. But, Miss McKay... She's our coach, Doc. Sure she is, Doc. Uh, look, if it weren't good for her, you wouldn't want her to go, would you? I've given orders to Miss McKay not to move from this couch. Well, I'm sorry, kid, but you can get along without me. 
Oh, Miss McKay, there's someone here to see you. A gentleman. Oh, all right. All right, kids, you better run. Good luck. Goodbye. Merry Christmas. All right, you can send him in now. Will you come in, please? Hello. Michelle, I... Oh, I, I thought it was... Uh, May I put this package over here? But yes, of course. How are you, dearie? Oh, it's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Why are you lying down? Feeling all right? Oh, yes, I'm just resting. Oh, good. It's been a long time. Yes, yes, that's right. Oh, it's good to see you. Mm -hmm. You said that. But well, I bet you're wondering how I got here. Uh-huh. I was looking at the telephone book for a man named McBride. And I saw the name of Terry McKay. So I said to myself, could that be Terry McKay, my old friend? And it was. <laughs> yes. Then I said to myself, I haven't been very nice to Miss McKay. After all, I had an appointment with her one day, and I didn't keep it. You didn't keep... Oh. Well, that's not a very nice way to treat an old friend, is it? So I said to myself, I must apologize. So here I am. That's sweet of you. I thought so. I've often wondered about you and how you were. Really? I've often wondered about you, too. So, you did not get angry because I wasn't there. Oh, now, now, you must have been at first. Yes, I was. First, I was furious. I said, um, he, uh, he can't do this to me. Who, who does he think he is? Mm. How long did you wait? I mean, did you wait long? Let me see. I, I waited till about... Midnight. Oh. Then, what did you do? Then I really got mad. You can just imagine standing up there. Yeah, in a thunderstorm. Yes. Then what did you say to yourself? Then I said, um, oh, why don't you go home and get tight? Oh. <laughs> but you didn't do that. Didn't I? No. Well, well, maybe you, maybe you took a little one every hour for about a month. Can you blame me? I should say not. The least I could have done was to send you a note. Oh, well, maybe by the time you thought of it, you, you didn't know where to reach me. Hmm? Well, you swore that if you ever saw him again, you would ask, didn't you? No, no, I remember we said if we could make it, we'd be there. And if one of us didn't show up, there must have been a darn good reason. Like what? So there'll be no more questions what? asked, I hope. Cigarette? No. All right, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> you know, I, I walked all the way here, ten blocks. To wring your beautiful neck, and instead I promise not even to ask you why you were not there. You knew that was the reason I came. Uh-huh. Hmm. How's everything with you, Michelle? Oh, I see. You can ask questions. I guess so. Well, I thought everything was fine until I saw you last night. And then I knew there must be something between us, even if it is only the ocean. So I bought myself a ticket. You're sailing? Yes, tonight. You're happy, aren't you? Yes. And you? I, I don't know. You see, I'm worried about the future. What will people think of me? They will say, there goes Andre, the mad painter. Oh, there must be something the matter with him. <laughs> he doesn't like women. He won't even speak to them? Oh, yes, yes. He sails the seven seas. And to every woman he meets, he says, where will you be in six months? And they're there? Everywhere. Tall buildings, pyramids, everywhere. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And where is he? Waiting. Inside. Want to change the subject? Uh-huh. Merry Christmas, Michelle. <laughs> Merry Christmas, dear. Well, well, six months ago, who would have thought we would be spending Christmas together? Oh, before I go, I brought you a present. Oh, I'm sorry I haven't one for you. I, I didn't know I'd be seeing you. Oh, but it isn't really a Christmas present. It's a shawl. A shawl? Her shawl? Then that's why my letters to her came back. Yes. She died five months ago. I would have sent it to you, except I didn't know your address until today. It's beautiful. Put it on. She wanted you to have it. Well, goodbye, Terry. Goodbye, Michelle. You know, the way you look now, I painted you like that with a shawl. I wish you'd seen it. Go base it, it was my best. <laughs> I didn't think I would ever part with it, but, you know, there was no particular reason for keeping it anymore. And then a girl came into Kobe's shop about a week ago. He told me about her. She saw in the painting, well, what I hoped you would see, so I told Kobe to send it to her. Because he said she was poor, 
And not only that, he said she was... Well, well, anyway, I, 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 I told, it to, uh, told him to send it to her. She plays my season, and she, she can't afford to... Well, <laughs> you know me, big-hearted Michelle. Yes, yes. What's be, behind the screen? No, don't. No, no, it's nothing, really. It's nothing. My picture. The lady with the shawl. Michelle... You know, there is one thing more Kobe told me about the girl. You know, the girl he gave my picture to. She was... She had been hurt. She couldn't walk. Oh, please. Don't say any more. Why didn't you tell me, Terry? If anything had to happen to either one of us, why did it have oh, to be? darling, you? don't look at me like that. It was nobody's fault but my own. I was looking up. At the 102nd floor. You see, it was the nearest thing there was to heaven because you were there. Terry, darling, I'm not going. I'm never going. You will be well again. Oh, darling. Of course I will. <laughs> if you can paint, I can walk. Our stars will be back for a curtain call in just a moment. Now, how can it be that two pretty girls come back from the same vacation with two such different reports? Mary says... It wasn't much fun. I don't know. I guess I just didn't fit in or something. But Ruth tells a different story. Oh, I had a marvelous time. And I met the most wonderful man. You see, the difference is that Ruth knows daintiness is the key to charm, to romance. And she knows how easy it is to be sure of freshness, especially with new Quick Lux to help you. It takes only a moment to lux under things every night. Then you're sure you won't offend. Those rich, gentle suds take away every trace of perspiration, quickly, thoroughly, safely, with no harmful alkali, no cake soap rubbing to injure fabrics or colors. So pretty under things stay lovely longer, too. To protect daintiness, to save pretty washables, Get the generous big box of Lux Flakes tomorrow and Lux under things after every wearing. Dresses, blouses, sweaters, often. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. The charm of love affair will linger long in our memories. And Irene Dunn and Charles Boyer were certainly worth waiting for. Thank you, C.B. It is worth waiting a very long time to play opposite Irene Dunn. Oh, I bet you say that to all your leading ladies, Charles, but I, I like it. <laughs> will you be my character witness, Sibby? Indeed I will. If I were an actor again, I, I would have said the very same thing. Oh, I didn't know you were at once an actor. Was it on the stage? Oh, yes, Charles. As a leading man, they say he made a lot of feminine hearts flutter back about, um... Well, he made them flutter. Hmm? <laughs> Excuse me, I, I, I didn't catch the date. I didn't mention it. Oh. <laughs> well, that's... Uh... There's considerable doubt about the flutter of hearts, but it was 35 or 40 years ago. Well, I didn't know about this, C.B., but if I ever produce a picture myself, I'll try to find a part for you. If you happen to have Irene Dunn as the star, Charles, I'd, I'd like to play the leading man, or something like that. You're hired, Mr. DeMille. Uh, what are you playing next week? It's the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer hit, H.M. Fulham Esquire. And we'll have two of the original stars of the picture, Hedy Lamar and Robert Young. And Josephine Hutchinson. H.M. Pullum Esquire is the drama of a young man who must choose between the tradition of his family and the life he himself wants. A choice that's symbolized by two women, played by Hedy Lamar and Josephine Hutchinson. That play closes our regular season. So I hope you won't miss H.M. Pullum Esquire next Monday night. Well, you certainly have a very fine cast for it, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good luck. Good luck. You, you both win well ladies, tonight. Now, before I say good night, I'd like to have you listen to an important war message just received from Mr. Donald Nelson of the War Production Board. Mr. Nelson writes, 
The War Production Board needs the cooperation of every American housewife in a waste fat collection program vital to the war effort. One of the important tools of war is explosives. Explosives to smash enemy tanks, ships, and planes. We and our allies need enormous quantities of explosives. And you, women of America, can help supply them right from your own kitchen. How? Simply by saving used cooking fats and greases. The bacon grease, meat drippings, and frying fats you've been throwing away. For fats make glycerin, and glycerin makes explosives. It's as simple as that. And now that our supply of fats and oils from the Pacific has been cut off, we must stop throwing away the valuable kitchen greases that we must have to produce glycerin. Here's what you do. Strain your waste kitchen fats into clean, wide mouth cans. Very soon, your local salvage committee will give you instructions from the conservation division of the War Production Board telling you just what to do with these waste fats to get them into war production. Watch your local newspapers for instruction. This is a definite way in which you can help to win the war. Our soldiers and sailors on the fighting fronts need your help. Signed, Donald M. Nelson. Of course, we'll all do our part in this important undertaking Mr. Nelson has described. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Hedy Lamar, Robert Young, and Josephine Hutchinson in H.M. Fulham, Esquire. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Ali. Irene Dunn will soon be seen in the Universal Picture, Lady in a Jam. Charles Boyer's next picture is the Warner Brothers production, The Constant Nymph. Heard in tonight's play were Tris Coffin as Kenneth, B. Benaderet as the grandmother, Ferdinand Meunier as Courbet, and Griff Barnett, Norman Field, Edward Max, Anne Doran, Bruce Payne, Dory Carlton, Eric Snowden, Charles Peck, Tony Martelli, Leo Cleary, Dix Davis, Barbara Jean Wong, Joe Pinario, and the Bryan sisters. Tune in next Monday night. You hear Hedy Lamar, Robert Young, and Josephine Hutchinson in H.M. Fulham Esquire. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick.